In acclaimed and award-winning author Bonnie Jo Campbell's Once Upon a River, 2011, a prequel to her first novel, Q Road, we learn the story of Rachel Crane, a teenager growing up in meth country outside Kalamazoo, Michigan, whose somewhat wild mother, Margot, shoots a predatory local man who won't leave Rachel alone. Once Upon a River flashes back to Margot's own teenage years in the late 1970s when she was forced to leave her home to forge a hard scrabble existence while sailing a canoe down the Stark River. When the novel opens, 16-year-old Margaret Louise, who calls herself Margot and whose family nickname is Sprite, lives in a small Michigan town whose main employer, a metal factory, has closed down. On the one hand, this crashes the economy, making the people living there even more desperate, but on the other hand, for nature-loving Margot, this means that there will be less chemical runoff into the Stark River. Margot is beautiful but somewhat difficult and closed off. Her personality shaped by the fact that her mother abandoned her and her father when Margot turned 14 under somewhat unclear circumstances. Now, she and father, to whom she barely talks despite his efforts, live in a cabin across the river from her cousins and their family. For the last year, Margot has been slowly building up sharpshooter skills with a rifle that she connects to almost preternaturally, treating it as an extension of her arm. She can to kill a muskrat by shooting it in the eye, thereby leaving the hide undamaged, and she knows how to choose the sort of ammunition that won't exit its skull on the other side. Her perfect aim makes her identify with Annie Oakley, whose biography is the only book she owns. A year earlier, when her beloved grandfather died and the family gathered across the river, Uncle Cal promised to show her how to skin a deer, but instead, raped her in a shed. When one of his kids caught him in the act, Cal claimed that Margot had seduced him, an idea that her embarrassed family seems to believe, ignoring the attack entirely. Now, a year has passed, and Margot marks the occasion by shooting off the tip of her uncle's penis. As her father and Cal's son, Billy, rush to the scene, Billy realizes what Margot has done and, in retaliation, shoots and kills her father. With nothing left, Margot sets out on the river in the River Rose, her grandfather's rowboat, with nothing but her rifle, the Annie Oakley biography, and some supplies. She tries to stay hidden as much as possible, a theme that runs through the book, making Margot sound at times like a woodland animal, and to hunt, fish, and forage for food. Her vague plan is to try to find her mother, although as Campbell's language makes it clear, the river itself is a kind of mother to Margot. Margot makes her way using her knowledge of the natural world and her naturally cautious approach to people. At the same time, she is a headstrong teenager, and her choices often reflect a lack of experience. In episodic encounters, Margot meets a variety of people, mostly men. First is Brian, a backwoods man who has fallen on hard times after the closure of the factory, and now dabbles in criminal activity. He takes Margot in, and they have a sexual relationship that seems benign until his menacing brother, Paul, enters the picture, threatening Margot's safety. Paul rapes Margot, and instead of protecting her, Brian reacts with jealousy, as if the rape were Margot's doing. Defending herself, Margot shoots and kills Paul. As the winter comes, Margot meets Michael, the polar opposite of most the men on the river. Gentle and calm, he opens his yellow house and his heart to Margot. Over the course of the winter, they fall in love, but the more time they spend together, the clearer it becomes that Margot is just too wild to settle down, and Michael lacks the kind of cutthroat mentality that seems necessary for life in this part of Michigan. Margot and Michael make vague plans to marry, but in the end, she realizes that he wants to transform her into a more normal person, and she leaves him. The next man she encounters is never named, instead, always called, the Indian. They meet as he is searching for the roots of his Native American ancestry, have a short and enjoyable fling, and then part ways. Margot next encounters the man who will impact her life the most, Smoke an old man whose daughters want to put him in a nursing home, but who would rather die in his own house. Smoke is the first man who doesn't threaten Margot in any way, not only is he too old to get sexually involved with her, but he is also gay. He is also the first man whose physical frailty means she has to take care of him instead of relying on him to care for her. Smoke's combination of crass manners and a gentle approach to life meshes well with her own. After some weeks with Smoke, Margot realizes that she is pregnant, her first impulse is to get an abortion, but she can't gather the nerve to go alone to the clinic. Instead, she tracks down her mother, learning the details about why her mother left. When Margot turned 14 and stopped growing taller, her mother simply decided that, 
she was a woman now, with no more need for parental guidance, freeing her mother to run off with another man. Still, her mother agrees to help her and takes her back to the abortion clinic. However, at the last moment, Margot changes her mind and decides to keep the baby. She moves back in with Smoke, forming a kind of pseudo-dad-grandpa relationship. When he dies, he leaves his house to her and the baby. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.